Here's a backstory. I just flew out from North Carolina, headed to Denver, Colorado on a business trip. When I got back, he had truly been sitting for a full week. He just did not want to crank and it was acting really chunky. So I pulled into the gas station right next door thinking that uh, this is another part of the backstory is my gas gauge is not real accurate. So I thought, well, maybe I parked him with him being low on fuel. So I filled him up and went to crank again, same amount of difficulty, uh, but finally got him rolling enough to where I was able to get home. While I was in Denver, I got sick uh, with COVID and had to isolate when I got home in order not to get the rest of the family sick. So I slept in the van. I leveled it so that it was real nice in the back to be able to sleep in. I didn't move him again for another whole week. So I went to crank him and it sounds like this. Nothing. I can smell fuel when I crank it long enough, so it's it's getting fuel. It's been a year and a half since I've done a tune-up and done the plugs and everything. It could be the coil pack, could be gone. I had forgotten, but back in February, I ordered a coil, two coil packs because NGK sounded like they might be uh, discontinuing coils for the Toyota van. If it hadn't been for a fellow member, Chris, reminding me or starting a conversation and reminding me that, you know, have you checked your coil? that I went and looked in my stockpile and found my coils. So I am going to pull this seat up and I am going to install or at least expose my coil pack under the distributor. And we're gonna see if it looks like it's burnt up. I have looked online and I've found several images of Toyota vans who've lost their coil packs on toyotavantech.com. And this long story is a precursor, so I'm not really gonna talk very much during the rest of the video. I'm just gonna take this thing apart and we're gonna see what we find. This one, you have to get to from underneath, and it's just a nut. Go into the wheel well, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Take the seat belt receiver off. I'm just gonna pull this one piece of carpet now, for removing this panel, the other thing that has to happen is you have to be able to remove the um, console. I don't know if anybody else's does this or not, but if this thing sits for any length of time and it isn't touched, it starts to ooze resin. It is so nasty. It just gets really gummy. Ugh, it's sticky. There's one more screw back here in the back and as it turns out it is a hex 
it's an eight millimeter and I've got it on this guy and I'm going to use something I learned not long ago it's kind of ridiculous you go through your whole life and you don't even know this but the shape of screwdriver handles are purposely designed to fit on a wrench well, this is a 18 mil wrench and I am going to use it to leverage ah, it was not gonna budge by hand got it so right there is my coil it sits underneath your distributor um, rotor there's four screws in here one two and then all the way underneath two more and by the looks of it they're just little phillips heads this is number two there is so many wires and cables right here that it makes it very challenging to try to hit it don't know if this one's gonna work because i'm so tight let me see if i can unplug this one there's number two Unbelievable. Got it. Shorty, let me see if this works. If I can feel it. Gotcha. Number four. Well, that was easy enough. It is starting to look a little bit worn. It might be time to just do all of it. So you have two little wing tabs and you gotta pop those off. This is just a cover for the top of that. That's all that does is it protects those connections. So in order to pop this thing out, I have to undo these, positive, negative. These little guys are seven mil. Just don't hurt the wires. Yeah. All right. There's that dude. Oh, there is a gasket. I do not want to tear up. Okay. The new one. Sit him in. Put the gasket back over top because I do not have a new one. Okay, so be aware of the fact that the back screws bolts those back bolts they are not quite the same length as the old ones well, you might need to pay attention to the length of the bolt when you put these in snap it into that little holder the black one goes into that bottom holder Jim, it broke. Oh crap. Okay, so you don't want to over tighten that. Wow. Well, there you have it, folks. That's how you mess up a perfectly good job. Well, fortunately for me, I have a second coil. And I'm just going to have to pull this one out and replace it and just exercise the maximum amount of patience with the situation at hand because getting angry about it ain't gonna do a dead gem thing
have been a very quick little job <sighs> turned into something else. And I have a real cute little paperweight. So awesome. So awesome. Just don't over tighten these. There's no way to fix it. It just snapped off into the inside. So, say uh, lovey. See the electrical tracing on that? It has definitely been arcing across the face of that um, resin. That's a simple solution when the, when the engine just won't turn over. It could very easily be your coil pack. I hope this video was helpful. Um, thankfully, I am back on the road. I uh, appreciate all the help from those folks in uh, on toyotavantech.com and on the uh, Toyota Van Facebook group. Uh, makes all the difference in the world to have the support. Super duper awesome bunch of people to be helpful with these old vans so thanks everybody hope you uh enjoyed the video and i'll see you the next time take it easy bye